to survive economic collapse. Yeah, I know the title's a little bit provocative, but it's not too far from the truth. This is part three in a series that I've been doing for guys to help guys put together a proper set of tools that can handle 80% of the problems that you're going to have, whether it be just day-to-day -day problems, automotive breakdowns, household problems. Um, well, you know, where I'm coming from is a is a lifetime worth of experience that I can bring to these from uh, boat being a boat mechanic, from being an automotive mechanic, from working on heavy equipment, for just being a homesteader and having need of these on a daily basis. I have distilled the tools down, the ones that I use and grab for, that are in my personal cart that I use almost on a daily basis. And I've weeded out anything that's superf superfluous, what's the word? Superlative? Superfluous? Su su superfluous? <laughs> um, I'm not an educated man, so let's get, get, get onto the tools. Okay, let's start off with box end wrenches. Oh, before I go any further, I'm going to put right over here, two videos here and here for the previous videos. These will open a new window, so if you'd like to go there and check out the, the um, uh, firewood handling tools or wood cutting tools, splitting malls, axes, that, it will be here on the left. And then, of course, a uh, basic socket set here on the right. You can go uh, open those up in new windows and watch those too. But today we're going to be covering end wrenches, crescent wrenches, pliers, and screwdrivers. So what you need for a basic set of end wrenches is two sets, unfortunately, standard and metric. Because manufacturers can't decide on a standard, we have to deal with both. So starting with your regular, you need to start with a quarter inch to and go up to one inch. That will cover almost everything you need to do. Now, specialty things, you know, ignition wrenches and small things, we're not going to get into that. This is for the common man and for most jobs. So put together a set uh, on your standard from quarter inch to one inch. On the metric side, I have found that from eight millimeter, I might dip down to seven millimeter, seven or eight millimeter up to 22 will cover most things on uh, modern cars. Lots of different qualities in wrenches. You know, what do you go with? Do you need snap-on wrenches like this? No, I don't think you do. Unless you're using them daily, I think that they are um, an extravagance that most people don't need to invest your money in. On the low end side, uh, really cheap, you're going to go with your Harbor Freight wrenches. Mm, better than nothing. I'll leave it at that. But the best value you're probably going to find is your Craftsman tools. You can find them on sale or the best place to get these things are at garage sales. Just make a note, put it in your pocket, carry it around. Like me, when I have something that I re want to remember, I carry in the back, my back pocket of my tin pants an all-weather journal or write in the rain with a small cut-off pencil. So when I think of something or have an idea of something I need, I write it down. That way when I go to a, um, an estate sale or a garage sale or Home Depot, I can quickly look in here and remember, okay, I, I'm in need of these things and it helps me to remember. Just keep it with you. So uh, Craftsman uh, is a good way to go. You can buy them relatively cheap. So that right there is the two sets of wrenches. Next, you're going to want a couple of adjustable wrenches. Sometimes it's just not handy for jobs to grab this whole set and go and you just need to tighten something up and you need two wrenches. You need to get something on the front and the back. So I would recommend a 12 inch minimum, a 12 to 14 inch crescent wrench, this size right here, and then a smaller one about an 8 inch. Those the Crescent brand, Husky brand from Home Depot good, again Sears, Craftsman, uh, you can't go wrong. As long as you stick with something American made, that makes a big difference. Oftentimes these things on the cheaper ones don't lock very good and you're going to have a problem with rounding off a bolt. And that five, ten dollars you saved is not going to be worth it when you have to deal with that. So a couple of good um, spanners, Crescent wrenches. Next, which is really invaluable, is a set of vice grips. Make sure you go with the vice grip brand. They make the very best ones. So what these are essentially a locking plier that you can, this often is a last resort tool. When you've got something, a bolt that's rounded off, something you can't get to, it just acts as a portable vice. And these are an essential tool. I would have two of these if I could, uh, one a minimum. And make sure you get the vice grip brand. Next are pliers, also very critical. If I was only going to have one, I would go with maybe medium to larger size like this. Uh, invaluable. Something with really good aggressive teeth, and they can also act as an impromptu wire cutter. They have that feature here. Uh, it's not the best wire cutter, but it will work. Better yet to have a small and a large. That way, you, it's another tool that you can just grab them quickly, put them in your pocket, and then you have the ability uh, to get on both sides of a nut and a bolt. So two pair of pliers is a very essential. To expand on the pliers, 
Uh, also, a pair of good dikes or side cutters. Um, very nice. And if these aren't cutting very well, you know, don't forget you can sharpen these. Uh, with a small stone, working that edge, uh, very easy to sharpen. You don't need to throw them away if they're bad. Uh, these I've had for years and I've resharpened them many times. And then um, on the, also on the other end, a pair of needle nose pliers like this. This is a bit of an untraditional style, hand style. I would go with something uh, probably you're going to find just a regular conventional hand, but either way, it doesn't make any difference. These are really nice if you drop something or just to do small detailed work, uh, very, very handy. And again, they've got wire cutters on them also. So here we have with these three options, you've got some, some backup and some redundancy uh, with a wire cutter option. Another tool that I would just really, really miss, I have two of these, is a great big pair of channel locks. This is the tool of last resort for big things, especially for pipe and pipe fittings. Um, it opens up really big. The jaws will go up to probably about five inches and uh, just invaluable. I use it all the time. Um, it's just something I can grab and put in my pocket and know that it's going to be big enough for whatever I come across. Clamping, for crushing, getting pipe fittings loose, a million different things. These are really great and two pair is better than one, but one pair I think is essential. And last off are screwdrivers. Now we're not going to go into any specialty screwdrivers. I'm just going to put together the basic set for those of you guys that don't understand. There are three, excuse me, there are four main sizes of screwdrivers. Let's we'll talk about the Phillips. First is your number one. You can see the size of the head there. Number one is going to be for smaller things, a lot of electronics, real detailed, delicate work. The most common size you're going to run into is a number two Phillips. That's this size right here. This is what you're going to use 99% of the time. Number two Phillips is good. On screwdrivers, on the larger ones, if you can find one that has this, you can see the hex head on there. For really tight screws, you can get a wrench on there or a pair of pliers or something and assist in the turning if you, don't, if you can't get um, a good purchase on it. But some of them, even like this with a square head, uh, you can get your, your um, spanner on here. That's for, uh, I'll use the word spanner for the benefit of my UK subscribers. Uh, you can even do this. You know, Just get yourself a little bit of extra power. Sometimes you, you, you need that to get the job done. So Phillips screwdrivers, we got a number one, we got a number two, we've got a number three, which is still relatively common, and then I believe the big one is number four, which uh, I don't even keep in my toolkit uh, because it's just so rare that I use it. Um, but there are some out there. As far as regular, you can go by, get by with about three of them. Um, small, I don't know if they're numbered by sizes. Here's your more standard and then a larger one. I don't think there's much need to go any bigger than this. It's rare to have slotted screws anymore. Most everything has went to Torx, Allen, or Phillips. So um, not, uh, not a tool that I use a lot. I use it more for a pry bar than anything else. To expand that kit, I would really look at, do, at a couple stubbies, a number two, and then just your standard Phillips. A lot of really tight to get areas where you cannot get those big long handles in, uh, this will really save the day. You don't use them very often, but uh, when you need them, you need them, and there just isn't any substitute for them. So again, uh, to help you guys who don't have a lot of experience with hand tools to wade through and, and to, to weed out all the superfluous, did I get it right that time? all the non-essential tools, let's keep it simple, uh, this is going to be a really solid kit. So add this with the video on the sockets and next video we'll be covering um, a few more specialty things. Maybe we'll get into some hammers, uh, some prying tools, a little few specialty wrenches, Torx, Allen wrenches, uh, some basic kits, but if you follow these guidelines and put this kit together, uh, it can fit in a relatively small toolbox and it will really save the day. <clears throat> and you'll have your bases covered. You'll be able to save the day, you'll be able to make um, uh, repairs, needed repairs that may be essential or non-essential. It's just going to be something you can grab and know that you're very well covered. So, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one.